I have a long history of bringing down the government um, in this country because I'm British, always have been, always will be. Adonis, who I'm playing, Adonis Canute, is, uh, his family go way back to, I think, the 7th century and is, should be rightfully the King of Britain, but you can't be bothered because it's too dull. And uh, so Adonis is there to defend our country, um, which he does in the show a lot. He's incredibly good looking. He's incredibly intelligent. He's the best hung man in the Western Hemisphere, and that's why I was cast. Um, and I'm happy to do that. I'm happy to do that for my country, my people, but mainly my pay packet. I'm only joking. Of course, I'm not being paid. Uh, I gave all my money to charity, which, which I do. I like to live like my ordinaries. When they try and pay me, I'm always refusing, which is God's truth. Do you believe that? Good. Who are these bastards? Do I like them? Okay. I like you. The greatest thing about Adonis Canute is that his spelling is pre-Middle Ages, Dark Ages spelling, which is C-N-U-T. Perhaps it is some relative of Fukuk, F-C-U-K. C-N-U-T, but the beautiful thing is being called Adonis, because I am beautiful, and so is the character, is uh, that I, what I want is huge posters all over the country saying, Rick Mail is a Knut, do you see? Which um, would amuse me. So, uh, uh, because it's just great, that's why I want it. I don't know if they'll let me do that or not. It's not a dirty word, it's an old, ancient, English, historical word, Knut. And there was a King Canute, and uh, Adonis is related to him way back. If I'm asked to explain the issues raised in Believe Nothing, I think the nearest I can come to uh, summarising it is if to say it's a complicated programme. It makes the X-Files look like Gardner's World and a dull episode. Of God as well. I've been asked what the turning point of my career is. A, I don't have turning points. My career started on the 7th of March 1958 when my mother gave birth to me. Now the world is a better place. Um, what is a turning point in a career when Ed Edmondson? Yes. But it was never a career. We don't do it like that. We just, I met him. In Manchester, we had a great time. But believe nothing uh, is great for a million reasons. But one of them is because me and Aid met at uh, Manchester University, which was great. And uh, <laughs> he used to like chase first years down the corridor and attack them. Oh, I love Aid. He just chased them down the corridor and hit them because <laughs> it was more fun than lectures, you know. He's a wild boy. And, uh, yeah, oh, well, a turning point. We didn't have a career then. We just met and had to share a sense of humour and so got on with having a good time. And, uh, and we're on tour next year. Bottom five? Bottom but Yeah, yeah, <laughs> bottom five. The last one was uh, The Arse Oddity. The Arse Oddity, which is uh, 2001, An Arse Oddity. Uh, we haven't decided on the title for next year, but that's, I'm talking about which year, I'm talking about 2003. This is 2002 today. Uh, oh, in 30 seconds. 30 seconds. The English team is about to be thrown out of the World Cup by Denmark. You heard it here first. Could I talk through the thinking? I could try. Uh, but I'm not very good at thinking, because uh, I like quad bikes. <laughs> and, uh, anyway. Uh, uh, the thinking that goes into, uh, uh, enough of that joke. So the thinking that goes into that me and Morris and Lawrence, Marks and Gran, thought, come on, let's do something. Let's do some stuff. And uh, we wanted someone super intelligent, someone who was outside, someone international, who's outside, excuse me, outside, uh, 
just Britain. It's kind of I don't want to compare too much with Alan Bastard because it's 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 a very different thing. But there is a there's something where uh, senses of humour collide or fuse, which is something vanity has always attracted me. I've always loved. Uh, it's always made me laugh. Vanity, particularly misplaced vanity when someone thinks they're great, when they're not. Someone who thinks they're more important than everyone else, which nobody is. Uh, it just makes me laugh. I don't know why. It's just the collection of cells that are in my brain because of all the people who go back in history. I don't know who's back there. Um, I'm just a product of something that's gone before, and it's just uh, vanity makes me laugh. Violence has always made me laugh, particularly, well, I mean, sincerely meant violence, but not very well executed. Uh, Mistakes. It's, I mean, it's basic communism. Hello. <laughs> basic comedy, I mean, which is that if you rise up, you have to rise up high in order to fall. And pride, you know, pride before a fall, I think that's quite all-compassing um, a phrase that includes a lot of my stuff. It's about self, self, self. Um, vanity, uh, thinking you're better than others, and, uh, and hence that it's a massive permanent feed line for the fall. But Lawrence and Morris have always had a kind of anti-authoritarian uh, sense of humour in the same way, in as much as, uh, I don't know, I kind, of, I kind of like to attack myself. It's kind of super vanity. <laughs> I like to make jokes about me because I'm so vain. I like to make jokes about vanity because I'm so vain. Which is about me. Take the piss about me. And uh, Lawrence and Morris don't like misplaced authority, authority, which is where that coincides with vanity. Uh, not merely the Thatcher administration or, uh, or Tony Blair's administration, but uh, globally how it's happening. And. Uh, What's not challenging but kind of uplifting this time is that uh, Adonis is a genius. He doesn't need computers because he's too clever. He reads books this fast. That's on a slow day. He is a genius. He knows everything, except he doesn't know his Achilles heel is that he doesn't, he doesn't know anything about common people, which is a very anti-Oxbridge thing. It's a, it's a beautiful combination, it's a lovely collage. Um, because there's a bit where he knows everything and someone comes up and talks about him some, some in Coronation Street, he's got no idea what that is. Stan Ogden? He doesn't understand what a, what a Stan Ogden is. Or a takeaway. He does, it's great. So you've got someone who sets himself up high and achieves things on one level, but then his underbelly is always there to smack him for, uh, for his weakness, which he is unaware of. Things he doesn't know are things that he doesn't consider to be important. Or it just he doesn't know about the, you know, he doesn't know about pubs, <laughs> you know, what's his pub? What is pub? <laughs> um. uh, yes, I mean you do appreciate life a lot more once you have, once you've been to the edge and looked over, and I have. I was dead for five days. Um, it's pretty groovy, isn't it? Uh, I have been to the edge and looked over, uh, and then I was allowed to come back. And, uh, and I can't tell you what I saw down there, because I can't remember. <laughs> uh, yes, the most recent, the next year, me and Ada going on the road with bottom five. Unless it's bottom four, unless it's bottom six, and my brain doesn't work, but we're on the road. We haven't written it yet, but it's going to be the greatest thing you've ever seen in your life. Of course it is. Um, but last time I was out, Aid hit me there. It was a very fantastic, in Liverpool, he hit me there on stage and split my head open there. It was a bit hairy, uh, but they stitched it up. And uh, that was a Liverpool general, thank you very much. And um, so that's the last time. It was in the middle of a fight and he bashed me. And uh, I thought I was sweating. I was sweating very hard in the fight. and. Uh, I can't remember my eyes were going a bit like this, and he stopped being sort of so good at fighting. And he was kind of a bit sort of hesitant. I thought, what's the matter with you, spazzing a bad? <laughs> like this. And uh, the audience are there, and he's there. He's, waiting, he's going, poof, like something, blinky this. <laughs> and then he finished the fight, and I turned around, and got a huge laugh from the audience. What's, what's so funny? I looked down at my blood on my shirt. I go, ah, 
like, <laughs> which is kind of doubly funny because it's the first big show I'd done since I've fallen off the crab bike. Quad bike, crab bike. First big show I'd done since I'd fall off the quad bike, smashed my head in, and now I'm better. I go on stage with Edmondson, <laughs> he rips my head open with his fist. Uh, and it got a laugh. So, you know, if you're gonna, if you're being gonna be a tosser, you may as well get a laugh. <laughs> See you in the next dimension. Oh, just one more thing I have to add. Jesus Christ was nailed up on Good Friday and came alive again on Easter Day. I fell off a quad bike the day before Good Friday, which my family knows, crap Thursday, and I came around on Bank Holiday Monday, the day after Easter Day. That's Jesus, three days, Rick, five. Better come back for another try, Jesus. I am Rick Mayo, and there's not many people that can say that.